Yes, yeah, so today is our, our first day tasting in 2016. I've been tasting the legendary uh, 2013 vintage. I haven't really tasted that many, but everyone says they're the best ever. We're see, we'll see because I really like the 2012s. So let's check it out. Thirteen was maybe the first return to, to normal. A very dry year. Spring started off uh, with very dry soils. But because of that dryness, pretty small berries. Um, there's a lot of stress during the phenological, um, the, the phenological stage in which you're developing tannin. A lot of warmth early on, so early bud break. Just to give you kind of an example, we had it's sort of an average across Napa Valley, somewhere between seven and eight inches of rain when our seasonal averages are closer to 35 or 36 inches of rain. The big thing that stood out for me was the, the amount of wind we had during the growing season. And there's so much more acidity with that vintage because that wind was bringing a lot more cold air and kind of moderating the temperatures during the vintage. We only had, I think, one or two days over 100. There weren't a lot of heat spells or, or any rain during, <clears throat> during the summer. We started early. Crop-wise, because of the relatively good weather, um, was kind of an average crop, distinctly less than 2014 or 2012. Um, but it kept maturation moving along quite quickly, and so we were harvesting, say, two weeks early compared to the long-term average. We started picking on the, the 5th of September, um, which was early, um, and then we had um, a heat spell, and we had to wait for four or five days for everything to come back into balance, um, and then continued picking, and then uh, we had rain twice during the harvest. So it was an eventful harvest. But in essence, one of the things that did happen was we had something that sounds quite technical, bunch stem necrosis, which is where we lost about every fifth or sixth bunch which sounds like something bad, but Mother Nature kind of did that as a natural thinning. And so the yields in 13 were a little bit lower, maybe 20% less than, for example, 12 or 14 or would be average. But that thinning was almost done perfectly, which is, I mean, better than, um, better than probably a man could do it. And the berries were smaller, um, and thus the concentration was much uh, bigger, more tannin, uh, still the same, you know, a lot of color and flavor release, but uh, more tannin. Adjusting winemaking, doing more, more whole berry ferments, uh, perhaps slightly shorter macerations, but still, still the very big year. Good development of the fruit, like phenolics, flavors. Uh, to me, precise, none of the ripe. You need to, to know when to pick, not get greedy. So that wasn't the key of the vintage. And the wine, the extraction was fairly, very easy. So. Same thing, you have to monitor not to overdo it. Um, but I'm not using, uh, let's say, aggressive technique to extract. But we, we don't use any additional yeast, it's all uh, indigenous yeast. And we just saw, with the 13 wines, more color to the tune of 20 to 30% more in Tokalon than we've ever seen before. We saw it immediately in the tank. You don't know it when you taste the berry, but it's boom.
there it was in the tank. So that was really a kind of a vintage of restraint because it's easy to get more or too much. And that was where you need to, to dial that in, in a sense. Twelve was a much more, um, I mean, in just in transition from eleven, such a night and day vintage, um, really, uh, really juicy, but um, really juicy, accessible wines, really beautiful and just supple, um, open and and not really requiring age, but really lovely wines. And then thirteen is, again, totally different in terms of the quantity of phenolics. Twelve is a much more lush, you know forward, much more accessible and uh, more hedonistic wine. I like the 12s now because 13s are taking a while to come around and really be in their full stride versus 12s are in their stride now. I think the tannin structure was really the big difference between 12, 13, and 14. There's a lot of material and extract in, in 13. And it was also a fairly savory vintage, whereas 12 I think of as more of a fruit year. 13, I think, uh, more as a savory year. 13 is better for the long haul than 12, but, um, you know, 12 has a place. I, yeah, I, I, I prefer 13s, just personally as a winemaker, I guess. Great acidity, great quality of tannins. Um, everything is there in abundance, I would say. Flavor, acid, tannins. So that leads you to, to, to be a, a great wine to me. So incredible structure, and they're definitely, it's a vintage built to age and will live a very long time, but very, very well balanced, um, very pretty wines, um, but very firm and strong wines with an incredible core. A high tannin profile, high anthocyanin profile, um, which gives it this intensity that's like straight from the earth. It feels like it's straight from the earth, a pure expression of this site. It's a, it's a vintage that, in, in tasting as many of the 13s uh, that I have from Napa Valley, uh, it shows its potential, but you get this sense that there are so many layers beyond what you can even perceive on the palate today. So I think to enjoy the wine now, it's, it's perfectly fine. But the really exciting part of 13, I think, is what is you know yet to come. Mm -hmm. So witty tones, incense types of things, spearmint, those characters were, were coming out more strongly in 13 for us. I think it was just a, for me, is the balance between um, uh, a warm growing season, but still uh, the typicity of, of where those grapes are grown doesn't get overshadowed by, by the ripeness.